Hola, bienvenido. Hello and welcome to the France 24 interview. Our guest today is Laurent Saleh. He's a former student leader in Venezuela. He just spent four years behind bars in the hands of the intelligence service known as the Sabine. He was accused of planning attacks. However, he was never judge. Last year, the European Parliament awarded him the Sakharov Prize for his work in defense of human rights. On October the 12th, he was suddenly freed, and he now finds himself in Madrid. Thank you very much for being with us today. Thank you, my friend, for this opportunity to tell to Europe what is happening in Venezuela. I want to speak about those detention centers. First of all, this jail known as the grave, which is in the hands of the intelligence service. You spent over two years there, and you've spoken about white torture. What exactly is going on inside the grave? Well, as you know, Venezuela is undergoing now a situation of terror. It's a system, political system, producing terrorism against its own civilians as a method of social control. They have developed a system of torture, of cruel treatments, inhuman, downgrading treatments against the political prisoners. One of those sites is called the Tumba, the tomb. It has this name because it is the fifth ground below level under one of the main buildings of the intelligence service of Caracas. It's called the Tumba for this reason, because it is located at the fifth level below the uh, metro, the underground of Caracas. This place is always very cold. The individuals are isolated. This is what we call, what they call isolation cells, where you lose your sense of orientation, your sense of time, and where various methods are implemented to perturbate the nerves of the uh, detained. The aim is to break the mind by inflicting pain and very deep alterations in order to get false testimonies and create a simulation of uh, forbidden facts. This is what we call false positive. Are we talking about psychological torture, physical torture, or both? Both. In Venezuela, they use also physical torture and psychological torture. What, what is happening? Since the Universal Declaration of Human Rights until now, it's almost, I mean, we're going to celebrate the 70th anniversary of this proclamation. We have noticed the development of standards and of methods to protect and guarantee human rights. Among them, the fight against cruelty and downgrading treatments. At the same time, you see the development even faster and more efficient in those totalitarian regions of various ways and forms and tools to create pain, to inflict traumas in individuals without this being able to be controlled or seen after that. This is why it's called white torture. It's a non-physical torture, but it is very nefarious and even worse. I'll give you an example to, to see things in a more clear way. When someone is totally isolated for uh, an extended time, month, even years, and this person is um, put in a very low temperature, moreover, we play on their nerves, this person is being threatened, being immobilized for long periods of time. Their family, their relatives are being threatened. Uh, medical experimentations are made on this person. All those methods became a trend that has been strengthened in, in Venezuela. But there are other places also, the helicoid. After two years spent in the tumba, it's a very different place. Indeed, it's totally different. It is it is the contrary because they 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 torture physically. There is an overpopulation. The tumba, very few people, almost nobody, and, and the helicoid, it's an overpopulation. Many many people at the helicoid. Uh, some month ago there, there was a very strong uprising where the prisoners 
we all re rebelled to show the world what was happening in Venezuela. Among the political prisoners, more than 300, even persons below age being imprisoned because they have protested or took part in demonstrations against the system. In Venezuela, there is a very, very uh, severe repression against the civilian population who is opposing the, the system. It's not something new. It, it exists since uh, Hugo Chavez when he rose to power in 98. I want to ask you on a more personal level. You spent over four years in detention. There was psychological torture, physical torture, but there were also suicide attempts. True? Yes, indeed. As an individual, when you're exposed to those pressures, to those methods of pressure and of ill treatment, of abuse for extended periods in a country where there's absolutely no guarantee for human rights, where all the institutions are concentrated and controlled by the party at the helm, where there are no organs defending human rights, where a, a public institution defending human rights, so very few elements in our hands. We have very little to face the situation, the situation we're in. As well as uh, hunger strike is a measure of protest, an extreme one. In my case, it has even been, uh, I mean, th this is what suicide means. It's a way of demonstration and to, to challenge the, the system. I was there for over a year in the tumba where I was totally isolated. I didn't even know what time it was. They insisted time and again to inflict pain, abuse. And it's a choice I made to injure myself. And sometimes you prefer death to put an end to all this once forever with the, with the pain. Remember, not so long ago, some days before my uh, release in the same building in the square of Venezuela, at the 10th floor, there is a political leader of the opposition who was assassinated, the municipal councillor Alban, because he was submitted to torture and he died in the middle of torture. The authorities said it was a suicide. Yes, the information we have is that, I mean, he was hit very badly. He received blows and, and he died. Had it been a suicide, it wouldn't have been less severe. Conversely so, it's a proof how far the Venezuelan system through organs of repression is breaking people and to uh, disintegrate the mind and, and bring people to, to commit suicide. The information we have is that he died right in the middle of an interrogation session. This is why they do not allow international bodies to be present in Venezuela. Do you think there is a link between his death and your liberation? Many people are asking why the regime let you leave prison and even the country. Well, I have been jailed four years and one month after having been kidnapped in Colombia. I have never been formally indicted. There was no trial, no preliminary hearing. And it's not the only case. In most of the cases, the political prisoners in Venezuela aren't even brought in front of a judge because all this is a lie. This is what we call the false positive and the simulation of facts against the law. On October 12th, the day of my release, I absolutely didn't know it would happen that way. It went very quickly. They told me at the very last second that they were going to uh, hand me over to the representative of the Spanish government who was present there in Venezuela. I think there is a very clear link between the assassination of the municipal councillor Alban and my release. It's a kind of uh, to, to 
take away the attention of the world from the very severe crime, serious crime they committed. But there are other elements of my release. My family, the work of my mother all around the world, in France, in Spain, in Rome, in America, with this denunciation of all that was happening, the torture, the abuses we were submitted to, and the work also of the international defense of my lawyers, and I would say also the internal work within Venezuela. And without the shadow of a doubt, the international community, the European Union, played an essential role. Last question. You've accused the former Colombian president, Juan Manuel Santos, of handing you over to Venezuela. He says it was a regular extradition process. Do you want to take him to court? Yes, indeed. The uh, working group on arbitrary detention of the UN decided last year that my arrest was totally arbitrary and against all the treaties and international agreements, and hence the uh, government of Colombia, the government of Juan Manuel Santos, is responsible for a crime against humanity, like in my case and the government of Nicolás Maduro too. The Inter-American Commission of Human Rights, who took my defense, even when I was still a uh, human rights activist, all this shows that there is a judgment against the Colombian government and against the President Juan Manuel Santos and the Foreign Affairs Minister Olguin. When I was arrested, there was no arrest uh, warrant. I wasn't able to talk to my lawyer, to my relatives. I was kidnapped by the intelligence service of Colombia, who delivered me to the intelligence service, Bolivarian intelligence service. And even as of today, there was never a formal indictment against me. Thank you very much, Lawrence Ali. Thank you for joining us from Madrid, and thank you for watching this edition of The Interview. France 24, four news channels in four languages, 430 journalists, 35 nationalities, 160 bureaus around the world, a global reach. 355 million households in over 180 countries can watch France 24. 61 million viewers watch the channel every week and the numbers are constantly growing, with audience figures up by 31%. France 24 Online is also forging ahead. Over 18 million visits a month on France24.com. With 45 million videos viewed online, France 24 is a leader on YouTube, while our 37 million Facebook and Twitter followers make us France's number one channel on social media. To our constantly growing community of viewers, thank you.